What a mess. So we got a call for a truck that has slid off the road up here near Yankee Doodle, a little north of the Turkey Farm Road. I don't know, Danish Ranch Road. There's lots of different names for that area. We're gonna head up there and see if we can get it. We got Ed here. Yeah, it's here today. It's cloudy and might rain a little, might even snow, about 54 <laughs> degrees. And we got peanuts and lady, yeah, smiling lady. We got Tom Tom following us uh, in Dig Dug. We may need an anchor, so we're bringing him along for that purpose. So I'm excited. I'm getting my truck Dig Dug out here on its first, well, it's a second recovery, I guess, that it's helping on. This truck's not all sorted out yet. No. I'm all right, all right. we're good now. Like I was saying, it's not all sorted out yet. Calm threw us in neutral there, so we had to get that sorted out right on the fly. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it's all right. I don't have a winch or anything, so I don't know how much help will be. Maybe we'll just have me pulling with a recovery rope and not winching. I don't know, we'll see. We're gonna head up there and see if we can get them out. So my dad said, hey, I think I know a shortcut. And this is definitely a shortcut, maybe. We just turned off the road, went over the curb. And it's a road. All right, that didn't pan out. Yeah, not the way we're going today. Last time we were up here, the road was covered in snow. It wasn't muddy hardly at all. This time I'm expecting it to be muddy. So we took a few minutes and put the mud fenders back on the Morver before we headed out here. But it looks like it could be snowing up there right now too. So maybe the mud will all be covered. I don't know. I think the roads are gonna get greasy here on us in a little bit though. Morver is getting away from us. So we might have been traveling a little fast for Dick Doug. He's still got his leaf springs and suspension. Basically just a lifted Chevy truck. We're gonna have to slow it down a little bit, but I'm worried because we're racing the daylight. I want to get out of here before dark. We'll see how it goes. All right, the road conditions are definitely deteriorating. I caught a glimpse of Tom and Colin back there, so they're coming. We're just trying to keep the mud off our windshield and uh, get there as quick as we can. Yeah, it's kind of slick out there. It has gotten very greasy, very wet. We should have put it in four-wheel drive a long time ago, but Matt's not stopping. Nope. We're gonna go off the road. Right, dude. A little snowy out there, too. I'm gonna put it in four wheel drive. I don't know if Matt is, but I am for sure. I don't know. Got something. Oh, uh, I think it's just brake dust. There's one of the black. black. Okay, we're gonna get out here and make a plan. See what we need to do to get this out of here. What a mess. Oh my goodness. Loan my son the truck to come hiking. Him and his buddy had two See, different vehicles. My son stopped right here. He came up over the hill and slammed my son clear into the... Just pushed him right off the edge. Right off. Yeah, I came Bent down. the I frame. Was, I was going maybe a little too fast, and my front driver tire yeah. kind of dipped off, and I had stopped, and he came down way too fast and hit my, hit the back end and threw me off. What's the plan? We're, we're still making it. Yeah, buckled it right there. I hope it still drives. All right, due to the overwhelming ticket sales for the off-road record games, we have a little bit of a problem. I'm gonna need your help solving it. So, we are having the Mad Moose shuttle haul people up to the event that don't have off-road vehicles. 
If you do have an off-road vehicle, you are welcome to bring it. You can go to mattsoffroadadventures.com. We have a map on there that, can sh that shows you where you can drive and where you can park so that you can see the event. We definitely don't want you coming and landing like right at the event. There is no way we're gonna get 4,000 vehicles in that area. And once again, I would just ask that when you come to this event, you park in the designated parking area. Go and check that out. Thank you guys so much. This is gonna be amazing. Can't wait to see you. <laughs> All right, these are gonna get messy. There's nothing we can do about it. You're going to go up there, you're going to use one of these ropes as a tree saver and then hook the other one up. So with one soft shackle, you'll hook all three of those together and run that down. We're going to move your truck down here and we're just going to anchor off of it with a strap. Just to keep that front end from going down, we'll probably put you down here. We'll see. We'll look and see what it takes. Okay. I might have enough winch line to do this. You might just be taking one of those up there. That is the dead end. So you shouldn't need a soft check. You should just be able to do everything with this. Okay, pull forward. Just stop there for a second. I'm looking for the right thing here. What a mess. <laughs> All right. I would go down there, but it is. Here, hold this rope so I can pull myself back up. Crazy steep. Oh. Now I'm muddy. That's okay. It's the weekend. And we don't have the crew here with us. Yeah, well, we got some of the crew here. Okay, clear yourself of that rope. Okay, Tom, turn it hard right and get that thing in the ditch. Okay, straighten your wheels out and back up. Keep on coming. A little bit further. That's good right there. That should stop us from front end from going much further. You looking for a better route up? I'll meet you up there then because I'm going this way because I don't have a choice. Back when you were a kid, you used to love playing in the mud. No, I don't know if I ever did. Get me under here and get it? Yeah, I know. You can get it to my fingertips there. I got you. All right. Okay, we're gonna go around this tree. Freedom winch line, man. I know they're expensive, but in this line of work where I'm using them all the time, they're always just ready to go. Long time ago, not too long ago, I didn't have much use for a winch. And there's several reasons for that. One of them is almost all my work was in the sand, sand hollow, where we don't do much winching at all. But now that we're doing more and more jobs like this, where the winch is the right answer, I've been using them a lot more. And now that I'm, you know, that I've found synthetic winch lines, the Freedom, the Freedom winch, I don't have a bad taste in my mouth without winching it anymore. On belay. On belay. <laughs> okay. You jump in that thing. In it? The first thing I wanted to know is oil pressure. See if it'll start and go in reverse. Go ahead and start it. Good. We get a lot of questions about oil pressure at extreme angles. I've never seen a vehicle starve until it's like laying on its side. They're really designed to keep that oil over the sump. They work really good. Okay, pop it in reverse. Take the parking brake off. Okay, stop. That's good. Okay, so we had Chuck here. He's here to help and he's helping. We got his truck rigged to the Morver. 
A um, little bit more lead back here. We're gonna see if we can do this. All right, Tom, just put it in reverse. Okay, it should be in reverse. Kind of drag your brakes a little bit while you're giving it some gas. Not much, just a little. It's coming real good. Start swinging your wheel around a little. That's eh, not going to matter. Your front wheel's. And we're straightening that body out. That went good. Don't want to celebrate too early, but I feel like we did it. I think now you can celebrate. Stop. Good job, you drove that out of there. Yeah? It's a poor low, man. Poor low. Just, just went right out. Uh -huh. Alright. I didn't see. I think it was. Yeah, that was easier than I thought. Tree didn't move. Got it done before dark. Yeah, I washed my hands too too soon. Like that guy on the Fast and the Furious. Wash my hands too soon. I don't particularly like. I don't love movies, but I do watch them. I was watching The Fast and the Furious, and between hitting the nitrous too soon and the nitrous blowing, wasn't able to ever watch any of the Fast and the Furious movies after that. Something wrong with me, I think, because a lot of people love them. Well, that could have been worse. That could have gone down there quite a bit further. That could have been seriously ugly. Yeah. yeah, that could have been way down there. Yeah. All right, so is your plan to get this turned around and head back out this way? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know if it's helping or hurting. Yeah. Oh, you muddy dogs. <laughs> You're going to mess up my truck. That's okay, they always do. You're going to get mud in this muddy truck. Sure Let's get you a shirt yeah. right now, though. Well, yeah. I'm thinking about it. Awesome. What size do you want? <laughs> there you go, right there. That'll work. Minimal mud on it. Thank you. Okay, well you guys have a good day. We'll just skinny past you down on that wide spot. We're gonna head out of here while it's still light. Appreciate it. Yep, thank you guys. Thank you, you guys. We're just gonna mosey on down through here. We're gonna go, we're gonna stay on this trail and just keep doing it. We'll run the whole thing. And that way, if we find somebody that needs help, we can help them on the way out of here. That went way better than I thought. I thought that was going to be a really hard pull, but it must have been so slick that it came out pretty good. It came out way better than I think any of us were thinking. Yeah, that is and I thought. That tree didn't move at all, so, yeah. So we got a call for a Mini Cooper that is stuck in the mud up on the Wire Mesa Road. So we're going to head up there and see if we can get them out of the mud. We got Russell here. He's going to be giving the weather report. Yeah. It's like cloudy, but they're like wispy, not very, they're not rain clouds, they're like more whiffs, wisps, but they're pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, so like, like Russell said, there's some weather going on out there. If you don't remember Russell, he's the one that won the kayak at the Christmas party. Russell Smith. Yeah! This road, we're on the Smithsonian Butte Road. This road used to be absolutely terrible, impassable right now with as much rain as we've had. But the county came in here and put a bunch of road base down and a bunch of cinders down. It's not bad now. Over the years, about every 100 feet on this road, we've done a recovery. Like its entire length, every 100 feet, um, we did something but in the last couple of years we've done almost nothing up here because of the road improvements so there's your tax dollars it'll work right there you're the one in, you have the mini i have a mini cooper it's not the first time we've been stuck and it's down here it's down wire mesa okay how far not far you can see it from here okay all right we'll just drive down there okay 
just going to back this right out of here. Well, that's not too bad. This is the right kind of mud to stick you, though. Somewhere in here is going to be the, the eye bolt that bolts into right there. Where did they put it? Oh, I found it. But it's missing. Yep, it goes right there. And it threads in. So there's a tiny chance it's somewhere else in the car, but it's not where it should be. That answers the question that we get a lot where people ask us why we don't use this recovery hook. And I've answered it a couple times. Not every car comes with them, and every car that comes with them doesn't always have them. This is my secret weapon for, for hooking up under this car. There must not be anywhere to get stuck in Europe because all these European cars, it seems like they uh, spend an awful lot of time making sure that there's no place to hook. This one will work right here. We just gotta be careful about rubbing the rope with the tire. And the beauty of this is that will dry out and fall off. All right, so that's straight ahead. Just put it in reverse, don't give it any gas. And then just control your speed. When I honk my horn twice, that means to start easing on your brakes because we're done. Okay, all right, twice easy. And we'll go nice and slow. This will be a really slow pull. I'm going to be pulling the back end over and you're going to want to steer the front end over so we keep you out of this tree. Slick enough we didn't even need a wheel to be rolling. All right, let's see if it'll back up. That wasn't too bad. We got hooked up to them, got them out of there, even though they didn't have their recovery bolt eye hook. Shipping, got to cover all the bases here. Shipping, tie down, what do other people call it? I'll get corrected if I don't hit all the things. Not a recovery point, but it was missing. That was one of the things. Anyway, they didn't have it, but we got them out anyway. Thanks for watching. Let's run through this list again. Recovery eye bolt not recovery eye bolt, shipping eye bolt, shipping tie down, nautical device of containment in a ship. I think that covered all of them.